hit the skids. He started up his drinking. Then they started fighting. He took it pretty badly. She took both the kids. She said, I'm not standing by to watch you slowly die. So watch me walk in out the door. Out the door. Out the door. She said, shut up, Jack. I'm walking out your bloody door. Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out To Her Door by Paul Kelly and the Coloured Girls. Beautiful song, great story, really amazing feel. It's got that classic Australian kind of country flavour to it. So definitely most guitar players will benefit from learning this song and playing along with the original recording and really working on their time feel. So feeling like you're playing along with the, with the band, you know, and making sure that you sit in the groove provided. It's a really good exercise. So uh, the chords are relatively simple. We just need G, C, D and E minor uh, and as usual we're going to start the lesson by just looking at the chord sequence real simple but first of all I just want to discuss the way that I'm playing a G chord because many of you all know there's several ways of playing a G the most common kind of beginner way is using fingers one two and three okay so three two open 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 three okay that's the fret numbers that's the most common way but some people learn then the rock one where you move third finger over and you put little finger down as well so then the fret to three, two, open, open, three, three. But the one I like in this sort of country song is just using two fingers. Usually the third and fourth fingers might feel a little bit awkward, at, you know, to start off with if you're not used to this particular chord. But it's great one going from a C chord as well. It makes the C chord to G change very simple. Um, and you're basically playing third fret with the third finger, and the underneath of that finger will mute the fifth string. And that particular note to my ear kind of gets a bit muddy uh, in this sort of song. And then three open strings, a little finger on the third fret of the thinner string. Okay, so that's the G chord that, that I like using. But if you, don't, if you find that difficult, you could just play regular G chord as well. That's completely fine. Um, so the intro, really simple, four down strums to the bar to start off. We'll talk about the rhythm separately. We're just going to have G to D. C, and then back to G. And we'll do that again just to get you into the groove. So you're on G, D, C, and back to G. And then the verse starts with the G, G. Big up Mary D chord, C. Never had no G chord, G. Then when he got D chord, C, they really hit the G. G, he started up his D chord, C, then they started G chord, G, it took it pretty D chord, C, and she took both the Gs. And then there's a second bar of G. She said, Iman is not standing D To see you slowly D So watch me C chord D Out the G D Out the C G Out the G again D she said C chord, three, four, for two bars. Okay, and then we're through to the rest of the song. Also worth noting here that uh, in the chorus, on the live versions and the kind of authentic one, there's a little bit of swearing goes on there when uh, she says, shove it, Jack, I'm walking out your door. Uh, but that was eliminated for the, for the radio version, obviously. Uh, there's just a really nice little guitar lick in its place. So uh, you can leave that little bit out. Um, and it's that chord sequence, that, or chord sequences, okay, because it's different from the verse and the chorus, you should uh, try and remember them separately. Uh, and it's those sequences for the rest of the whole song, okay? So let's talk about the strumming pattern a little bit now, because it's a really important part of this song, is getting that groove sounding good. Uh, the, the pattern itself is relatively simple, it's just down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. That's one, two, 
three and four and one, two, three and four and. Okay, it's not a particularly technically difficult pattern, but getting it to feel really good is important, you know. And one of the things that it's worth doing is definitely like covering up all of the strings there, so you've just got a muted hit, and practicing the pattern along with the original recording. It's work, it'll be helping you work on your time feel, okay? Because even though mathematically it could be like one, two, three and four and one, two, three and four, and it's not quite like that in real life. It's a little bit more human. There's something about it that makes it feel nice, where the, the, the strums have mathematically been moved a little early or a little late, or, you know, in, in varying quantities, in various different grooves and different styles, but that's the thing that you want to be trying to pick up on, okay? That's what will make your playing sound real great, you know, when you hear somebody play simple chords and it really works, they've got a good time feel, okay? So, do it, definitely doing a little bit of that, muting all the strings, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and just working on that and making it feel really nice. You can get it feeling nice on your own too, but definitely playing along with the original recording is going to help with that as well. So once you feel confident with the, the, the strumming pattern, then you want to apply it to the song. So just look at the intro, so three, four, one. So once you're comfortable with that strumming pattern over the chords, that's it, you're done. You should be playing along with the whole song all of the way through. And again, just I want to emphasize the thing that you want to be focusing on is really working on your time feel. So the thing that you want to be aiming for is feeling like you're part of the band. So while the song's playing and you're playing along with the band, you really, it's almost like there's no difference. You can't differentiate between what you're playing and what the band are playing. That's how tight you want to be locked in. When the guitar on the record is doing a down strum, your down strum wants to be at exactly the same time like exactly exactly the same time that's what you should be aiming for and you will find when you start to get it right that your guitar kind of gets absorbed by the track it's a good way of telling you if you're getting it right or not if you can still if your guitar is kind of poking out a bit then it's you know you, maybe you still need to be working on your time feel a little bit. Another really good thing to do if you've got the facilities is to record yourself playing along with the original recording so you can adjust the volume of your guitar against the actual track and then just listen to see how you're fitting in and it can be very very rewarding experience recording yourself because it'll expose your weaknesses which can be sometimes a little bit brutal but very productive because it'll be like, oh yeah, I really need to work on my time and therefore you'll improve it and become a better guitar player and that's what it's all about for all of us, I guess. So, uh, hope you enjoy playing this song and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.